What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Phones and Drones. So, iOS 18 Beta 3 and watchOS 11 Beta 3 dropped a couple of days ago. We've been running both on our primary devices, on our Apple Watch Ultra 2, and on our iPhone 15 Pro Max as we traditionally do. And I wanna go ahead and tell you guys about how stable it's been, if it's worth using as your primary daily driving software, and how battery life is. We already did our video talking about some of the new features. We're not gonna jump into that in this video, but I do wanna show you how smooth and consistent both devices have been on beta three. Let's jump right into it. Okay, first things first, before we jump into this thoroughly, I do wanna show you, for those of you that did not watch our other video, I wanna jump into settings, general, about, and iOS version to show you the build number here. And as you can see, Beta 3 carries a build of 22A5307F. The F signifies that there are a ton of betas still to come for iOS 18. Again, not surprising considering this is not going to be released until September. But I say this at a caution because, and if those of you aren't familiar with how Apple betas go, the alpha lettering at the end signifies how close it is to being complete. The closer to the beginning of the alphabet, an A build, B build, really does mean it is closer to release and we're closer to that RC. Being an F build, that tells you we're A, B, C, D, E, F. We are quite a number away from this being ready for prime time or even an RC candidate. So expect a number of other betas. Now, having said that, Again, before we jump too far into this, I do just want to show you in the calendar, we are, and again, we're assuming things, Apple has known to do Apple-y things and not stay consistent with the release cycles, but since we are already in July and really midway through the second week, I would not anticipate seeing a public beta for this until about the 15th or 16th, which would be the midweek cycle through the bi-weekly releases for the developer betas. So again, basically 15th or 16th, you will see public beta one for iOS 18. That's our guess. They could technically push it until around the 22nd or 23rd, just depending on if they want to align it with beta four as the primary release. So who knows? I just want to throw that out there for you guys to be aware. Another thing to be aware of, if you missed that prior video, is battery life. So battery life on this phone running beta three has not been terrible. It is still not as good as on a stable build, but it also more importantly does kind of trash your battery max capacity. So kind of like what we've gotten accustomed to though, any beta you run is obviously not perfectly optimized. It's a reason it has a beta title and it remains true for iOS 18, especially during the first couple betas where we were losing max capacity. So that's maximum battery health, which takes away from your max capacity. So 100% is now 96% for us. Uh, it is substantially dropping a percentage of two or a week a week. We actually weren't losing any battery health up until we started using the betas. So for the last few weeks on iOS 18 betas, that whole beta cycle, we've lost 4%. I think that is one of the bigger call outs over anything else. Again, having said that, do with what you want with this information. What you're here to know is how smooth everything's going. How has it been running? I kind of touched on battery life already being good. And as you can see, just kind of popping around the UI, jumping through everything, going into the camera app. It's the smoothest beta that we've used to date. And you can see the interface has been working very well. It operates pretty much, much improved over what we had prior, including that battery life. So again, if we go ahead and use our action button shortcuts, everything works as you would hope, kind of jumping around and let's go into our typical run through stocks. Everything opens, it's very prompt, going through anything you really wanna look at. So as far as a consistency standpoint, it is great. Again, one of the other big adjustments here, finally, Apple is doing something on the back end, forcing dark mode uh, into third party apps. We talked about this as well, but now if you go into dark, you can see how it actually tints any of the other apps. 
and all the icons show accordingly. So pretty nice. It does work. We're not having any of those errors we were seeing earlier. So really that's all for iOS 18. It's been consistent. It's been working very well for us. Still just not sold on battery health. Now, moving on to watch OS 11 beta three, jumping right into this, this has been a massive improvement. So yesterday and today running this beta, I can tell you right now, we took this off the charger at about maybe 10 to seven, and it is now 542 and we've only lost 25% and it is heavily used. We keep getting all of our notifications as we did prior and it's been amazing to use. No intermittent refreshes, no intermittent restores. Everything has just kind of worked as you would anticipate. Very, very smooth too. Uh, opening and closing apps. Let me go into the weather app for you guys to see and it's just been much more of what you would expect to use on a daily basis. You can see how easy everything kind of opens and operates. I will also say that, let me close this off, those new smart stack widgets uh, are great. They've worked without fail. We have had no little blank glitches in here where it would kind of show the rectangle here and show no information in it. That has been fixed 100% here. And yeah, I could just tell you everything has been very, very, very much improved. You can see the quote unquote live activities work in here. You can see how this just adapted to where we are for the system to be disarmed, giving us relevant information without us needing to do anything for that on the smart stack. The one thing I still don't see implemented yet, because again, this is developer side and on a developer basis, but those gestures we always talk about and the double taps, there is still no other additional integration there. Um, I do wish we see some more, again, gestures like I'm saying, and specifically, again, those multi-taps being added in here. So that's really the call out for this build. Battery life is massively improved and I have no complaints or really any bugs I've noticed yet in beta three. So again, take this for what you want. It's definitely gonna be more taxing on your battery still. Same concept remains for watchOS as it does for iOS. Uh, I know this isn't the most fun video to see. New features aren't really being loaded on here as regularly as I would you know, like to see or you would like to assume to see, but it is consistent and it is very, very good on battery life. So plenty of good to look forward to here on beta four. I would assume again, public beta four or public beta one for developer beta four is probably what's gonna come to watchOS 11 in the next week or two. But let us know in the comments down below, what do you guys think? Are you actually happy with these betas? Have you put them on your device? What sort of feedback do you have for the other viewers? Let us know down below in those comments. I'm still torn, but I'm definitely liking the, the route that Apple is on with these. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.